In this live self-defense training video, we're going to be talking about fast self-defense, things that you can do very quickly to defend yourself. And one of the ideas we're going to talk about a lot is when they go high, you're going to go low, either with this simple elliptical kick, sometimes bringing a knee in to the body, into the groin, into the leg. But we're going to talk about that first, starting with palm strikes. And I want you to be in a better position. So when the threat comes to you, you're going to step behind your hands. Your hands come up, they're open, they're ready. This is called the flinch block. You tuck your chin. Always keep your chin tucked when you defend yourself, you get knocked out. Your hands are here and you simply turn the shoulders, turn the hips, extend the arms, and you're going to strike with this hard part right here in your hand. There are five small bones there and that hand right there in the heel of the palm that you're going to strike with. And when you strike, you're going in and up. You're moving in two directions, not just straight forward, but in and up. And that can be coming in to the solar plexus, striking, knock the wind out of somebody or in to the throat. You turn your hand a little bit, you strike into the neck. That can be a fatal strike. You can strike into the chin, into the nose, anywhere you can to move somebody off of you. So it's a very fast self-defense technique. Your hands are up and open. They're between you and your threat. You're using a verbal command, back up. I'll defend myself, don't come any closer. They start to come in and you simply extend and turn. Extend the arm, turn the shoulders and hips. And again, you kind of pull your hand back and in towards you and angle it toward them. So you pull it back and in and then you angle it a little bit so that this part is sticking out. A palm strike is not like this. It's not a flat smack in the face with the palm of your hand. The palm strike actually has to pull back, turn a little bit, and then turning the shoulder and the hip and coming up at an angle. And it's a small angle, it doesn't have to be that bigger. They can be a lot taller than you too. And you're gonna strike in to the solar plexus, reach into the neck, up into the face, doing the front hand or back hand. I always suggest multiple strikes, not stopping until the fight's over and you've won for self-defense. The second technique, fast self-defense, are going to be a really quick elbow strike. This is a horizontal elbow strike. This can come into his jaw, into his temple. It starts in the same position. Your hands are up and open. You're standing behind your hands. You're in a guarded position, and your elbow will strike either backhand or front hand. Either one will work. And it's, again, it's two things. It's two directions. It's moving in toward the opponent, and then around your body for self-defense. Instead of an opponent, we should say the bad guy, right? The creeper, the weirdo. So you're striking in hard and fast using the bone. It's really the forearm that's striking. It's not just the tip of the elbow. If you were doing Muay Thai and you were doing a certain type of sparring in a competition, you might focus just on the tips of your elbow. They're very deadly, they cut skin, but it doesn't matter for self-defense. You wanna hit as hard as you can moving in to destroy something for self-defense. His ability to see, his ability to be awake, his ability to breathe temporarily or permanently through the throat, his ability to stand upright. Maybe you strike him so hard in the solar plexus with an upward elbow or a vertical strike. So your hand is here, same thing, you're behind your, your hands, your hands are between you and the threat, and then you drive this elbow up and into his body, up under the chin, into the nose. He could be a lot taller, you could be sitting, you still strike powerfully when you bring it up this way. And I had a bonus here is that you put on that helmet and you're guarding your head so you can absorb a strike. If he did throw a punch and you bring this up, you also are keeping him from hitting the soft tissue in your face from smashing your eyes, your nose, your throat. So your hands come up this way. They can come this way when they do. See how close you get this to your body? You're bringing it across this way. Texas Tactical says, very vicious. Yes, it is. So you're bringing it up here. I always like to keep the other hand up. Don't ever drop a hand, right? Look, you're so protected over here. This side, whole side of your body, and this side is wide open. You're gonna get smashed in your face. Always keep both hands up. You can get them up very quickly into these strikes, palm strikes that we already did. And then I like to lift your elbow and drive your elbow down at an angle, up and down. That's especially effective for fast self-defense. If he's on top of your body, his hands are on you, you can lift that elbow and drive it down and into his chin. Lift the elbow and drive. Two things are happening again. You're moving in two directions. You're moving 
around the center line of your body. You're twisting around your spine, shoulders and hips. You're also moving forward, striking in and down, maybe into his clavicle, into his jaw, into his temple for self-defense. Maybe his hand is on you and you smash that hand off that hard elbow. Same rule applies as this and this. Look how close you're getting the hand to your body. It's touching the top of your chest as you bring that through and down. From here, he's even closer. Let's say he's got you in a big bear hug. You shoot your hand straight up in the air and then bring that elbow down right on top of his chin or his forehead, maybe into his nose. Maybe you're hitting into the clavicle, hitting the top of his chest, depending on where he is. But you, from here, your hand, instead of trying to pull your hands out, shoot your hand up. It's very hard for him to keep your hand in if you lift it straight up and then bring that down, striking as hard as you can on the top of any part of his body you can hit. If you can, add a little jump and you'll really knock him out. You'll turn off his operating system for self-defense. So driving that up, coming down here. Another way, use this elbow, one of my favorite ways. Someone comes up from behind, you feel them, he touches you, he grabs you, maybe he hits you in the back of the head, or you see him coming out of your periphery. Turn your head, you see him, lift and strike. And again, look how tight your hand is coming close to your body. If your hand is out, there's less power. If your hand is here, it's like a tightly wound spring. When you let that go right into his jaw, he's knocked out, his jaw's broken, his teeth come flying out like a Rocky movie. From here, you lift that, driving it up higher than your neck. If his hands are squeezing the life out of you, literally squeezing, crushing your windpipe from behind, he's choking you this way, and you lift your hand like this and you turn, he can't stop it. He will not be able to stop you from turning. And what's gonna happen to his hand, his hand is gonna come off as you drive that elbow in to his face. If he's not, if he's too far back, he's got those long arms, extend that fist, and now smash the side of the body. Bring that elbow down into his solar plexus. So the reverse elbow strike, nice and tight to your body, nice and tight to your body. Now that makes me wanna bring everything down below his waist into the knees. Your hands are here, you're in your better position. His focus is up here. I said it at the beginning, when he goes high, you go low. Now you just bring that knee, and it's not the patella. The patella is the kneecap. You're not gonna use that, that's cartilage, and that's, that's gonna break, right? You're gonna use this thick band of muscle and bone and uh, tendons and everything that's on the top of your knee. You're gonna drive the top of your knee into his groin or into his thigh. If you've ever been hit on the inside of your thighs, you know how tender they are. You drive this into the thigh, you can bring it around at an angle, almost like a round kick that you see in Muay Thai, bringing the knee around, bringing the knee around, and we're gonna keep them all low for self-defense. You can bring it up higher, you can grab his head, and smash his head down there, but you're gonna have to pull his head down. You can't get his head down there, just smash his knees, smash his groin. This is fast self-defense techniques using the knees. And then that brings me to my favorite one, the favorite kick for self-defense. I'm gonna lower the camera, so hold on, I want you to get nauseous. I want you to see what my feet are doing. You're gonna take your knee and turn it out this way. Most kicks come straight like this. After they come straight, then there's a turn of the, there's a pivot on the foot. It's kind of hard to do in these shoes on this floor, but there's a pivot and then it turns into a side kick or a round kick or something else. In this case, the knee is going to go out and you're lifting and pushing forward at the same time. This is the elliptical kick. So it comes from here into here. This is a very stable kick for a lot of people. They can do it even if they don't have a lot of mobility or strength in their legs. This kick is very strong for almost everybody. The knee lifts and then drives forward. Now your target is gonna be his shin down to his ankle or his knee. What's gonna happen is from bending forward, you're going to lock it back and hopefully snap the tendons in his knee, stick him on the ground. So from here, your target is low. You lift that knee, he goes high, you go low. While he's up here thinking you're smashing his face, you're about to punch him, or he's choking you, or he's grabbing you, you're going to lift that knee and drive forward. From here, after you hit him, drive in, 
some elbows, some palm strikes, some knees to the body, but start it down here. You can even be uh, the chest to chest. He can have grabbed you, he can have his hands on you while he's spitting and yelling and screaming in your face for self-defense. You lift that knee and you just go right into the lower part of his body, smash him with a kick. That's gonna drop him a little bit. Drive some knees into his body, throw some elbows down there as he's falling to the ground. Fight's over, you win. That's the ultimate goal. Keep it simple, keep it direct. Immediate, direct, and explosive. I say close with and destroy. If you can run, get out of there, that's great. If you can't, you're gonna have to fight. To fight, you wanna keep it super simple, fast self-defense, palm strikes, turning the shoulders and the hips, hitting with this part of the hand, elbows, keeping the hand close to the body, as you go through horizontal, vertical, an angle coming down. You can also do an angle coming up. That's a very powerful elbow strike, especially somebody who's reaching down, trying to grab you. You can lift that up this way, shooting it up, bringing it down, driving those elbows behind you and down into the body. And remember, you can always extend that fist side of his face and knock him out for self-defense. And then as we go lower, lifting the knee, First straight, and then around, like a round kick, coming straight into the body, or around, think about hitting that sciatic nerve in the side of his leg, or breaking his femur. And then from here, going low to the tibia, breaking that lower leg, or hyperextending the knee, so that he does one of these. He's coming at you, all of a sudden he's like that. Just hold his jaws out, smash it with a fist if you have to, or palm strike, hit him with an elbow. Lights out, you win. Uh, put all your comments in the comment section. Let me know which one of these techniques you have worked with before or you want to learn. What do you like the best? Do you like the palm strikes, the elbows, the knees, or that simple basic elliptical kick? Or what am I missing? What else is a fast self-defense technique that you think would really work? Put those in the comment section because when you do that, the whole community, the global virtual dojo, us as a group, we all learn from each other. I appreciate you guys being here and I'll see you in a little bit. Thank you.